I'm going to bring out a cast member from Slacker, who is also the writer, director, and producer of the movie, and the artistic director of the Austin Film Society. Please welcome Richard Linklater. Hello. Hey, guys. Wow. Man. <laughs> it's a long time coming. I'm just so happy. I'm just so happy to be in a movie theater, especially the Paramount. This is just amazing. And uh, gosh, it just hits me. You know, the first fundraiser the Film Society ever did, we started in 85, but the first big fundraiser we did was for the 1991 release of Slacker. We were like, hey, we can take that money that would be going to our distributor when the film opens, we'll have it here and we'll put all that money in our pocket <laughs> of our nonprofit. And we, because we have a lot of movies to show and a lot of fun things to do. So that became a template and we did, we've done so many fundraising premieres and screenings and I don't know, it's just, I don't know, that thought hit me, but that was the first big fundraiser we did and who would have thought 30 years later, we'd still be here. But um, let me ask a question to the audience. How many people here saw the movie in the summer of 1990 at the Dobie Theater? Don't, don't lie. How many in the upper balcony? Okay, you're the hardcores. You're the OGs. You're the, you're the ones who, um, like, we're calling this the 30th anniversary. It's being called that, and it is for the national release. But people in Austin who were there, they know the real 30th anniversary was last summer. Not a very good summer to have a... Uh, screening, so I'm glad we're doing it now. But uh, that was the special one. That was, we distributed ourselves. So everybody worked on the film, everybody was around. That, to, I think all of us feel like that's our 30 year because, you know, we didn't have a distributor. We'd shown in a couple of festivals. We just, you know, it was like a punk band. We put up flyers everywhere, the same people who made the movie. It was just a real, uh, such a grassroots, you know, and showed it at the Dobie. Scott Dinger there was so. You know, it was just, it was just great. Well, that, that was fun. That, and I realize now that was such a once-in-a-lifetime thing, that a film you make, you just get to kind of self-distribute. And, you know, I don't know. It was like a band or something. It was, it was very cool. So, um, and I just want to thank everybody for being here. And it, it's so fun to have an excuse to uh, have a reunion. It's like the high school reunion where you actually want to see everybody. <laughs> so something to look forward to. And we're all having fun. And I'm going to invite cast members up here. Start, start coming up here. I know it's going to take a time. <laughs> Group A, I believe. Because um, apparently we can only have 20 people on the stage at one time, apparently. And so we're going to do it in two groups. But everyone's going to come up and say a few words. It, it might, hopefully won't get too out of hand. You put a mic in a slacker's hand publicly. Can't promise much. Um, I think. So yeah, cast and crew are here. Everybody's going to say hi real quick. And, and just in front of the line? Oh yeah, not to get near the screen. Um, Rudy. Okay, so, so we're lining up here. You know, when I, when I think of this film, I just think of the energy that summer of 89 when we shot this. This movie is so about the people in it who worked on it. It was just such a fun, creative you know, group effort for everybody. Is our stage full? Getting there. Harry, come down here. Here, I'm kind of, I've been casting the MC role. Two groups. Okay. Are you going to go first? Yeah. I, yeah. I'll go first. I'm Rick. I play, uh, I think his character's name is, uh, should have stayed at the bus station. Uh, and I cast myself. And I, no, okay, go ahead. <laughs> my name is, whoa, hi. Uh, my name is Jennifer Carroll. Uh, I played all night partier. And um, <laughs> uh, true fact, I did stay up all night just because I'm a method actor. Um, I, uh, I got the role because I was a barista in Captain Quacks on the drag and uh, <laughs> Rick came in all the time, and I heard he was casting, and I was like, hey, I heard you're doing a film. And he was like, yeah. I said, I want to be in your film. He said, okay. And 
And uh, that's how I made history as All Night Partier. I'm Rudy, I'm Rudy Bosques, I'm the cab driver. Yeah, and God only knows how I got here. Thank you. Day Hi, on. I'm Kathy McCarty. Uh, I really don't know how I got cast, but I always assumed from the role I was given that it was absolute typecasting. Who is the most frigid spinster on the entire scene? <laughs> because that's what I was playing. And, and uh, when Dee Dee Montgomery asked me to come down and uh, bring some clothes that were typified this uh, frigid spinster who lived with her dad, I brought some things and I showed up with these clothes on hangers. And she looked at them and she said, no, just wear what you have on. <laughs> All right, so I'm Katie Kokonos. Um, I met Slacker um, in Houston when I was working at the Southwest Alternate Media Project, and we were handling the NEA um, IPF fund, and Rick had applied for completion money. And I remember looking at Slacker, looking at the work in progress, and thinking, I, I want to be a part of that. So this was um, summer of 1989. So I kept looking at, at the Austin Chronicle, which we would get, and coming up with excuses to go to Austin. So Gus Van Zandt's Malanoche, the first film he did, was playing. So I called up Rick and lied and said, oh, I'm going to be in Austin. I'd love to stop by. So I met Rick. I met the whole crew. They were doing reshoots. And um, so then I helped get it into festivals and do post-production publicity. Was that the? Yeah, that's a, you did a lot. Right. You did a lot. But Swamp could have given us more money. You did not Swamp. give us a full grant. But, but we, we, Swamp we appreciated have given it. Them more you could have given us more. You got $2,000. I think he should have gotten $5,000. Yes. I'm just setting the record straight. But. Hi, I'm Scott Kahn. I'm um, credited as Key Grip and Guy on the Couch. And I was uh, won that role because of uh, empty space in the frame. But um, I um, met Rick and Lee um, at a Fossbinder Festival at a very, very early Austin Film Society screening. So early, the small space sold out, and we ended up at their house. And they fired up the projector for like, no, that was uh, Laguna Glory, and then we went to the Finger Hut that's featured in the film. And um, you know, I worked at Les Amis. Uh, they kept coming around. We're going to shoot a film this summer. And um, hey, I'll work on it. And there you go. <laughs> All right. OK, this mic is going to give us the virus after, <laughs> after 40 people use it. But I'm one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh. Um, I go by Jean Caffeine. Um, I've played music in this town for a, f a few decades, kind of under the radar now. Um, I worked at the Magnolia Cafe in 1989. <laughs> and um, Brett, is Brett here? Um, there was a guy named Brett, and, uh, and he said he worked for Rick and that they were shooting a movie, so I kind of shook him down and got the screen test. And then Rick said I could be in it if I got up really early in the morning and I was a dead body, <laughs> roadkill. <laughs> and I remember saying, well, I'll do that because I, I wanted to be in a movie and I had a very late night waitress gig. And, but is there a speaking role? <laughs> and he said, there was one, do you remember? We shot one, it just didn't make the final film. Yeah. It, but yeah, you had both. You were in the film twice, the dead body and you had a speaking part, but you yeah, got cut. I was, I was cut, but I, it metamorphosized and, uh, you know, like a phoenix rose in, in waking life. It, it turns into a different scene with two dudes, right? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> okay. My name is Ron Marks. Um, in, in a... 
In 1989, uh, I played a character called Bush Basher, and I'm still a Bush Basher today, but a George P. Bush Basher. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm Marianne Hyatt, uh, Big D, hello, Big D bred, uh, born in Austin, uh, educated at UT, um, uh, 30 years of finishing school in London. I was introduced to Detour Productions via the incorrigible and formidable Whammo. <laughs> uh, they took me upstairs from Quackenbushes. I told them about my musical hybrid idea, Contronica. And uh, they told me to wipe that neologism off my lip. And it was the beginning of a fabulous relationship in which I was cast as late night pickup. <laughs> <laughs> Feline, gotcha, I'll use that, all right. Uh, so anyway, totally spoiled, I'll never get over it. Thank you very much. We also did a scene that was cut, sorry. She had lines. But... Hello everybody, sorry. I'm Anique Baudet. And I, in uh, 1988, I got um, a really cool job. I was 19 at Martin Brothers Cafe in Whole Foods still miss their food like no one's business. Um, and Ann Walker was the casting director and her and Rick would drink coffee at Martin Brothers and I'd sometimes give them free refills. And, um, and then one day they gave me a card and said, we're casting a movie, have you ever done any acting? And I said, no, and they're like, that's all right. Um, come, come to a casting call and above quacking bushes. And when I went home, I was, I was living with my parents in between apartments and I, I told my mom, hey, this, these people asked me to be in a movie. And he was like, she was like, oh my God, that's a porno. Do not go to that. <laughs> Do not go. And I was like, I'm 19, I'm an adult, I'm going. And I went and I'm so glad. And then little two cool things in my life that happened um, over the counter at Mark Brothers was being part of this history making, and then also meeting my husband who is here tonight and has been to all three reunions with me. So thanks y'all, enjoy the movie. Awesome. Hey, uh, my name is Bruce Hughes and uh, I've, I've been in Austin my whole life. Uh, yes. yeah. I was a member of Poy Dog Pondering in 1988, 89, 90. All of my friends were cast in this movie, and I kept asking, how come I'm not in it? How come I'm not in it? <laughs> and finally, uh, Keith Fletcher and uh, Keith Fletcher had talked to Clark and Anna, drug me into Liz and me and said, there's a spot. You're going to be a mumbling waiter passing out oblique strategy cards. Don't blow it. <laughs> and so... <laughs> So we, we sat there and drank Shiner at Liz and Me all day long. And by the time it was call time, I couldn't remember any lines that were, I was supposed to say. All I know is that uh, all, of my, all of my friends are in this movie, and I love you all. I'm Gary Price, and I was the uh, uh, early morning Jerry Lewis watcher. I didn't have any lines in the movie. <laughs> But I came to Austin in like 84 and became obsessed with the film culture here. At those days, you could go to about seven or eight different theaters on UT campus for like two bucks. And one weekend, I just had laid out a schedule for myself and I was going to see five movies and by like midnight or something, the last movie was on UT. And I was about walking out of the theater and Rick and this, a guy named Jack came up to me and like, who the hell are you? We see you at every fucking movie we went to today. You know? <laughs> And then what happened, I went to Rick's house with Lee Daniels and we watched Rick's Super 8 movies for the next three or four hours, after five movies. That's how I got in Slacker, I think. Hi, I'm Tommy Pilata, and I was a PA. <laughs> yeah. And I got, I got the PA job because I had a car. So I didn't know anything about film, and then I was in it, I think, because I was a manager at Dobie Theater and I used to let Rick in for free. <laughs> Scott, sorry about that. <laughs> you, you let us all in for free. <laughs> I, came, I came to Austin in 86, 85, I don't know. I came to Austin back in the day. Uh, and about three in the morning, I was at the, at the omelet tree and I see on the wall a poster for uh, one of the early Austin Film Society screenings of Robert Brisson. And I said, who in Texas knows who Robert Brisson is? I called the number, Rick answered. 
Uh, I met him that night. I moved in with him that day. Uh, in Welcome the film, to Austin. I think, yeah, I think I'm billed as a Cadillac crook, and people say, uh, I say, tell people I lived, I crashed on his couch, but he didn't have a couch. I crashed on his film equipment, and he didn't have a sink either. We washed our dishes in the bathtub. <laughs> but we had a full equipment of, uh, to make 16 millimeter films, so it all worked yeah. out. <laughs> film is more important than running water. Hi, I'm Heather West. I played uh, the tourist Satana lookalike uh, in the film. <laughs> I met Rick first at um, an Austin Film Society screening of a, a John Ford movie called The Searchers. And it was amazing. They brought in the film version, not like the videotape. Um, anyway, he also was a regular at a restaurant that I worked at where I was known um, for being a bit of a smart ass. <laughs> and <laughs> so he asked me to be in the film and I agreed and I had two sold out nights before of Irma Thomas at Antones and so I had a bit of laryngitis when we did the filming but you know, I guess it worked out all right. <laughs> I was really surprised though. I didn't, you know, I hadn't been out that much and I, I reckoned that it wouldn't, people around the country wouldn't relate to it. I didn't realize how many college towns there were. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really, really, really pleased that, you know, our world resonated with people everywhere else. Hi, my name is Alistair Barron. I was actually cast at Magnolia. It was me, my sister, our two friends. Casting director comes up, can your kids be in a movie? What type of movie? <laughs> From there went on, great things. Peeping kid, I think that's my title. I'm a method actor now, so it's good. <laughs> so um, group one, we got one more, but group one, I think we're gonna start to exit so we can bring on group two, but yeah, go ahead and, yeah, go ahead and walk over here, yeah. Thank you. Group two, come over this way to this stairwell. Take it away, Kendall. Hi, my name is, my name is Kendall. Uh, I was, uh, um, what was my name in the film? Uh, Paul Revere or something like that? Yeah, maybe. Uh, uh, New Age Paul Revere or something like that. The guy with the microphone uh, said, free weapons, get away, partner. I was really thinking there was going to be more to that one. Because that, th oh boy, that monologue was amazing. Um, my name is uh, Donnie Stroud. I used to be called Bongo Don, and, uh, and um, I was working at the Magnolia Cafe on Lake Austin Boulevard with Heather, was my boss, and she was, yeah, she was a little bit sarcastic with customers. We, uh, we had people who would come to see us just because we were mean to them. It got to that point. But um, I was uh, given a card with uh, some really ar arcane, like, I don't even remember what it said um, about the film and the concept behind the film and what we're doing, and I was like, yeah, all right, that sounds great. I'd done some acting, but I'd quit, you know, I'd retired at 23, and, I, <laughs> and I'd never done a film before, so I was like, ah, that sounds cool. So I went down, you know, after my 4 a.m. shift ended at the Magnolia and uh, talked to Rick and Ann, I think, in the interview, and, the, and it was an interview, and they asked questions, yeah. What were those questions? It wasn't really an audition. It was like 
so what are you doing? Yeah, yeah it was like that, yeah. <laughs> I, well, I came for the film thing that you guys are doing, right? And yeah, I'm just thinking, oh, who, who might you be in this movie? Yeah. And, and I think at, at, the, at one point, because I saw it when you guys did the DVD re-release, I got one and I saw my audition and it was frightening because I was so young and I remember I said, you guys mind if I smoke? And I just lit up and smoked through my yeah, entire like interview. Cast. Got the part. Hi, I'm William David Martin Walker. Woo! My friends call me Whammo. Whammo. Uh, I play the anti-artist who throws everybody out of the Continental Club at the end of the night, um, uh, which is, I think, one of the few roles that actually has a job in the film. It's telling everybody I'll eat on which is ironic because I haven't had a real job since I got fired from KNAC Radio in 1994 for playing Ice T's Freedom of Speech. Uh, uh, I was the DJ at Cannibal Club, and Lee Daniel came in and said, uh, uh, we're doing this movie, you should come audition. And I did, and I met Rick at when they showed Pasolini's Salo above Quackenbush's, and we all got arrested. Hello, I'm Laura Tabor Huerta, and I did three different crew roles. I was a production assistant. I was a stand-in for the dead woman on the ground. And, <laughs> and I did crowd control, which I was very bad at. And I live in Austin, Texas, and um, I just answered an ad that was either at Quacks or the Austin Film Society. And you know, if you showed up, you could work on Slacker. I'm Ralph Watson. I was the steady cam operator on the show for two days. And we only used one of them, the scene you'll see. But um, Lee was my loader. I was the first assistant on Chainsaw 2. And, uh, and that was 80, 1986. So I'd known Lee maybe since 83. Or when he, whenever he got out, when, when did he, he get out of college? Yeah, 83, 84. So, okay, so. Uh, so Lee called and said, uh, we want to use your steady can on the movie we're making. And he'd shown me, we, Lee and I did a gig in uh, West Texas. We did a commercial for a bank. And the, the, the uh, line was, the wind is blowing good things to, great, to West Texas. And, <laughs> and so they interviewed people at the bank and stuff like that, but they sent Lee and me out to do time lapse. And uh, I remember that night we were in the... Alpine or somewhere, and he, and he had a videotape of stuff you, you edited half the movie or something. So I knew about the yeah. movie before I got there, but anyhow, that's, that's how I got there. So. But it was amazing to have a steady cam operator for this no budget movie. Yeah. <laughs> who, who, so, who, like everyone, worked on a deferral. So, so I knew Lee had a camera, and I was trying to, I was doing shooting music videos as a DP, and I thought, oh, I'm getting an assistant with a camera. Sure, I'll steady cam for you one day. And, and, and at the end of the day, Rick said, maybe the second day, I said, what's your day right? And I said, well, don't worry about it. Lee and I have a deal, you know. And, and he said, no. Uh, and at that time, it was 650 a day, I think. It, and a year later, I got $650. And last year, I got 650 I know. There was a Still. sale, right? And... They did a tribute for Rick at Alamo Draft House, and they gave how many directors? Ten directors? Some. So Jay Duplass calls me one day, and they gave me five hundred dollars to do a little video segment. And I said, "Okay, I'll do it for five hundred. And two other guys called. One of them was a film shoot. I don't know who that director was at the Continental Club. So they, he gave. Uh, who is the guy at Alamo that did this? I never Tim. met them. So we should probably... Uh, Anyhow. <laughs> so I've made over $3,000 off this show, so here we go. Thank you, Ralph. <laughs>
Uh, I'm Greg Ward, and I, um, I don't really remember exactly the process of the casting. And my, my part, I'd tell y'all what my part was, but I don't want to give away the end of the movie. Ooh, good one. <laughs> I'm Tamsi Ringler, and I was the, the video interviewer at Les Amis Cafe. And um, I also want to uh, shout out to my husband, Mara Stroutmanis, who was giant cappuccino at Quackenbush's. <laughs> And also our son, who's here. My husband passed away six years ago. So my son is here with me tonight, Laura Stroutmanis. Thank you, Laura. And uh, we had the wonderful good fortune to be neighbors with Anne and Clark Walker. And so we would hang out with them and drink Shiner Bach right up on Baylor Street, right behind Whole Foods. It's now gone. <laughs> Together again. Together again. <laughs> Can I interview you? I'm Luke, I'm the cameraman. We were a uh, documentary Woo! team, very important documentary team. I've got no stories to tell. I'm gonna, we need to get to the movie eventually. So I'm gonna <laughs> pass it. Hi, my name is Penny Van Horn. I, <laughs> I, why does it all come back to laser me? Um, I had a part that was filmed at Laser Me, this tragically was cut. <laughs> and my ex-husband here, Scott Van Horn, was really the star of the show and the one who told me about the movie. And he features with the fancy Nova wagon. Okay. Hi, my name is Scott. I'm a, oh, wrong meeting. Um, <laughs> My character uh, name was Nova. I was a counterpoint to Lee Daniels' GTO. Um, I, met, I met Lee first. Uh, we were coming out of Hog Auditorium after uh, Jean-Luc Godard's weekend, and he invited me to Finger Hut. And uh, <laughs> why does everyone laugh at Finger Hut? <laughs> it's like Turkey Leg Hut. <laughs> um, and then I met Rick. I was, after UT, I worked at Kinko's, the graveyard shift. And uh, Rick was doing copies for Austin Film Society on the crappy self-serve machines. So I offered to do them on the high quality stuff behind the counter. <coughs> That's how we met. And uh, I was building this old station wagon and Lee and Rick came over and Lee and I got into the, you know, the car jargon and, uh, and the rest is history. Uh, I would like to uh, shout out to Dee Montgomery yeah. And, and uh, Doug the Slug, who we, you know, we picked up hitchhiking, uh, Charles Gurney, both yeah. no longer with us. Wait, and the, can I just say the Film Society is forever indebted to Scott in those days. Uh, the late night shift at the Kinko's supported the whole Austin music and film scene. Yeah. Thank you. Don't t so many thousands of flyers gratis. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Kinkos. And he still got the wagon. Vintage drags. Uh, my name's Scott Rhodes. Uh, it's a different Scott. Um, and uh, I was the editor of the film, and uh, also I'm the guy, I'm not actually in the film, technically I'm on TV in the film. I'm the guy that shoots the, the camera. Um, but I don't want to talk about myself. It's, I mean, uh, my story is involved, uh, how I got involved with the film, with, again, with uh, Dee Montgomery, who passed, unfortunately, and she's not here and can't speak for herself tonight. But Dee was a good friend and ally uh, dear, uh, of mine during the film. So, uh, in 1988 or so, I was at Austin Access uh, Station and I at a workshop, and I sat down next to Dee Montgomery, and during a break, she started telling me all about the Film Society. And I said, hey, wouldn't it be cool to uh, have a, a retrospective on Tarkovsky, because he had just died. <laughs> and uh, Dee reaches over in her bag, and she pulls out this flyer, it's like abracadabra, 
And it's like uh, Laguna Gloria, Andre Tarkovsky, all seven films, retrospective, Austin Film Society. <laughs> <coughs> so, yeah. Um, even more magic than that, um, when I was at the, uh, I went to the screening, I went to Andre Rublev one night uh, at, at Laguna Gloria. And when I got home, my wife, Robin, told me the reason she didn't go with me to the screening was because she uh, wanted to take a pregnancy test. And uh, so uh, fast forward, we cut this promo film for the uh, international, uh, of the independent feature film project. Uh, uh, just a little promo, a slacker. And if that were able to be seen today, the very first scene is Rick on the bus, of course, but in the background you hear this baby uh, <laughs> babbling. And uh, that would be my son, Nathan, uh, who is also here tonight. Nathan, say hi. He's somewhere over there. Uh, and he's an autonomous grown-up of his own. And um, so, yeah, that's uh, uh, my tribute to the serendipity of meeting uh, D. Montgomery and er the history that follows. Hi, I'm Sigori Greedy. Um, I was in the remake of Realm of the Senses. And um, <laughs> my kids are here, my husband, but it's all cool, it's all good. I was like telling my husband like, you should be like proud and shit. Like, that's my fucking wife, goddamn right. You know, and so <laughs> he was like, okay. So anyway, but Denise Montgomery, that's how I got in the movie. Yeah. If you knew her, you were really lucky. And Detour Film Productions has always been about just bringing people together from all walks of life. Thank you. I'm Susanna Simone. I am the, I think my role was couldn't finish the painting or didn't finish the painting. Um, typical, I still have not finished the painting. <laughs> but I'm still wearing the same boots from my scene in the film. <laughs> and um, I was in the scene with Dee Montgomery and I brought a piece of Dee with me. She gave me this domino, so she's sort of here with us. Um, and she is also the reason I was in the film. I don't even remember her asking me. I assume that's how I got there. She, <laughs> she also asked me, um, to make a mustache for Clark, who shaved his mustache off between shoots. <laughs> I don't know the terminology. So I had never done that before, but I said, yeah, I can do that. And I went and bought some fake hair and made a mustache for Clark for his second shot. <laughs> and then finally, when the reshoot happened after, or no, the sound dub after Orion picked it up, I was um, the voice for someone else in the film, <laughs> who was Debbie Pastor. Um, yeah, so she's not here this year. <laughs> and so that's my story. All right. All right. Let's kick things off with these slacker boots. <laughs> Rick? We'll Let's see you afterwards. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna okay. watch the movie. Hey, and I'll be back. Thirty-five millimeter print, everyone. Thirty-five, no DCP. 